All right. So, thank you, everyone. Um, uh, I've just been notified by my wife, the legal person, that I don't actually have the little uh, indication on this slide that that bubble logo belongs to Digium. So, I'm sure I'll hear more about that later. So, um, I had a number of ideas for what to do for a presentation um, for this event. The last two that I've done, actually, at different events, I've done um, no slides. Um, as it turns out, this is the third one in a row that I've done where my time slot has been either at the end of the day or towards the end of the day when everyone's been looking at slides all day long and they really don't want to continue looking at slides. So the last two I did were slideless. They actually went fairly well. And then I got to the end and would ask questions and everything would go great and I'd get down off of the stage and someone would come up to me and say, can you send me some slides about all that stuff that you talked about? <laughs> and I said, well, I didn't actually make any. So, okay. So, so I had a number of ideas about this one. Um, this idea came to me on the plane between Atlanta and Paris. Uh, <laughs> and I'm running Windows. This is absolutely correct. Um, the open source people don't quite have video output on my laptop working perfectly, although it's really close now. Um, so anyway, this one came to me about halfway, somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean. Um, for all I know, there could be alien mind control rays in that area or something, I don't know. So if this turns out to be a very silly idea, then I'm sure you'll let me know. So one of the things that we've been dealing with um, in the asterisk development community over the past I would say, well, since Asterisk 1.4 was released, was that there is, unlike most open source software, excepting probably Apache HTTPD, which experienced the same problem we're experiencing, there's a relatively slow adoption rate of a new major version of Asterisk. So for example, for those of you who are using Asterisk heavily, how many of you have at least half of your system still on Asterisk 1.2 something? So about half of the crowd, which is what I would have expected. Um, for more business-oriented groups, I mean, where the people are not necessarily asterisk geeks, to use that term in, the, in a nice way, the percentage is even higher. And one of the reasons for that is it's a phone system. I mean, if you put it in, or at least that's the way most people think about it. Obviously, Ole just talked about we need to move it beyond being a phone system. but. Probably 95% or more of the asterisk installations that are out there are either a phone system or something like a phone system. And once you put it in and it works, if it isn't exposed to a security vulnerability, then the users really don't want you to change that at all. And yet we have another group of users in the community who are constantly pushing for more and more new exciting stuff. Asterisk has become boring to them. It just does the same things all the time. And it works great, but or maybe it doesn't work great for them, whichever it might be, but they're constantly wanting new things. So I came up with this idea for how to represent these two groups of users that the developers are trying to deal with. And then I'm going to talk about something that we have changed um, to try to address the needs of both of those users. And you say, I've, I've, I'm sure I've lost, I've forgotten more than a th other group, but. When we the third group is the okay. The third group is the one. Actually, they want the one. So Ollie says that the third group is the ones who complain when we change anything at all. Um, we've heard some of that recently on our mailing lists. So, all right. So this was what I was originally going to talk about here. Um, although we only have 45 minutes and this could actually take a couple of days, and decided, nah, we're not going to do that. Although some of this we are going to cover. So, how many of you have one of these at home? Not the couch, the animal on the couch. There's got to be people in here that have one of these at home, right? Well, that's, so that's my dog. So I'm not going to raise my hand, and she's not around to raise her hand anyway. Many of you have dogs at home. So we'll try to get a little interactivity here. Who can tell me uh, characteristics that they like about dogs? Things that make dogs fun people, or uh, people, they are people. Animals to have around or companions to have in your house. Throw anything out, I don't care. Nothing? Nobody has dogs. All right, we'll give you a few details about our dog. Um, that last part is actually extremely true. She cowers in fear and will jump up on our bed and lay on our heads if there is a fly in the house, which is quite interesting. I'm not saying that there's people in the asterisk community that are that way, but the third group that you just mentioned may actually fall into that category. So, some interesting things that I thought about. Dogs. 
that sort of start to apply to a particular group of people we have in our community. Uh, short attention span, yeah, we have people that are like that. Uh, people who will just download directly from our development repository without even trying to think about what might be in there, put it on their production system, and then get on the mailing list or call us on the phone screaming because their production system got broken. Well, sounds like what a dog does, right? They go snuffling around on the floor and they go, huh, that might be food, and they eat it. Turns out not to be food, and then you end up cleaning up the mess for two days after that. Similar thing with... Um, Lack of long-term memory. They don't really care what you did last month, six months ago, last year. They want what they want right now. And if you had not get them what they want right now, then they're not happy. And so, again, same group. And then the last one, which I'm not sure is all that important, although we do get uh, people who will repeatedly tell us about the same issues over and over again in the software, even though we've acknowledged that those issues exist and possibly have already fixed them. So now we're going to contrast that with some other animals that we have in our house. How many people have cats in their house? Nobody had dogs. There's got to be people that have cats in their house. I put my cats on the camera, yes. Yes. Um, no, these, these cats are some of the laziest cats that exist in the known universe. So, so a couple of uh, interesting things there. Um, Neither of our cats will play with toys. I'm sure that's not really interesting to you. But the last one there is kind of the important thing. There is a group of users in the community who would prefer that Asterisk never be any different than it is, except better. Cats are like that. They abhor change. They just hate it. They do not like you to change anything about their living environment whatsoever, except to make it better. But you're only allowed to make it better if it doesn't inconvenience them in any way and they don't actually get to see the change occurring. They just want to wake up one day and go, hey, that's cool, that's better now, awesome, great, thank you. That's that. And, much like this group of asterisk users that we're talking about, they don't really want to interact with you at all unless they need something. Well, this is what we have with a large percentage of the asterisk user community. They've been running asterisk 1.2 since forever. Some of them have been running asterisk 1.0 since forever. Some of them have been running 0.8 or 0.9. It would not shock me to find that there's somebody out there who's still running the version of asterisk that you had to compile the dial plan into and is perfectly happy still running that, although it's probably a pretty small group of people. <coughs> So we have to deal with this in our community. We have these two groups of people who are pulling us in opposite directions all the time. And we're going to, for lack of a better way to say it, put the asterisk 1.2 users in the cat category. They're perfectly happy with the way asterisk 1.2 works. We tell them there's new stuff in asterisk 1.4 and they say, yeah, whatever. My phone, when I pick up my phone, and I get a dial tone, although it's really interesting. I mean, I'm sure all of you know how SIP phones function. It's quite funny to watch in a trade show booth someone come and walk up to a Polycom phone, pick up the handset and hear a dial tone and go, ha, the phone system must be working. No. <laughs> it just means that the phone is turned on and has been told to give you dial tone. That's all. It doesn't really mean you can do anything. So they can pick up the phone, they can call the call phones, calls come in, they can answer them, they can talk to people, and they're perfectly happy about that. And Performance isn't an issue for them, because as Oli mentioned and other peoples have mentioned, how much does a dual core or quad core Xeon server cost nowadays? A couple thousand dollars in the US, 1,500 euro here, whatever it might be. And so you can put 1,000 users off of that if you really had to. You could easily put 500 users off of it if they're 100 calls at a time. So performance is no longer an issue. They don't really care. They don't, make, they don't care that we made the software better. The only thing they do care about, of course, is even though they haven't talked to you in a year, when they decided to use some part of the system they'd never used before and they find a bug in it, you have to fix it right now. And I mean like right now. They need a fix in five minutes because their production system is down. No, they can't go back to the configuration that they had yesterday. No, no, they have to have it fixed right now. So that's why they fall in this category. Then we have the other people. And we will call these everybody who's the, the early adopters, the, the ones who are willing to do the scary stuff. What they're most interested in is what's new today. What can you give me that I didn't have yesterday that I can go play with and have fun with? They will try things that you don't actually want them to try yet. You're not ready for them to try yet. Uh, as an example of this, um, when we switched to using Subversion for our version control system, which is now approaching two years ago, um, we implemented the ability for developers in the community to have their own branches just go off and play on some project that they want to play with, something that might